Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. Another edition of Surviving the Badge, Season 2. Tonight, we are going to be going over various district attorneys throughout the country and them being soft on crime. I'm your host, Ronnie. I'm John. Camille. Dustin. I'm Caitlin. We have two special guests with us tonight. Sorry I didn't mention that. We have Dustin and Caitlin from the Murder Hour podcast. Yay, Murder Hour! And they are going to give us their points of views on our topics tonight as our special guests. We appreciate that. John, go ahead and go over your beer moment with us. What okay, do we have? Well, we have a Margarita Goose by Cigar City Brewing. And it's... Uh, Are they in Tampa? Mm-hmm. It's okay. Fr- yeah, refreshing tart. Ale brewed with orange, lime, and salt. I'm afraid it might be right. a seltzer. <laughs> I'm not it's a seltzer like a beer. Does it? Yeah, Goose is a good beer. Oh, that's a sour. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, oh yeah. God, I hate sours. Love it. <laughs> Yeah, that's, Ooh, that's pretty good. Actually, that's not the worst sour I've had. It's a it's a very smooth beer, but it's got a very sharp lem- lemon flavor. So it or lime, it is sharp, um, sour. Um, I'm gonna give it a a six and a half. I'm gonna give it because I'm not a big fan of sours. It's not horrible. I've had worse sours. I'm gonna give it a, give it a five. Solid five. Yeah, I'll give it a six. Dustin. Uh, for me, this is an eight. Ugh. Really good. <laughs> good. Caitlin? I'll give it a seven and a half. So we're probably at about a six mm-hmm. and a half-ish, yeah. seven. That's yeah. not bad. Not bad at all for a sour. It's so not dumpster again. water, so that's good. <laughs> Margarita Goose, Cigar City Brewing. Not bad all right. at all. Good choice, John. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, that'll bring us to our sponsors, where we get our fine beer, is Kenny's Groceries, Located in Orange City on French Avenue in 1792. They have all kinds of uh, craft beers and regular beers and, and wines. And it's a grocery store. It's a, a wonderful place if you're looking for something different um, for a gift or whatever. Kenny's Groceries, Orange City, 1792 and French Avenue. And our second sponsor is CNR Constructors. They are a general <laughs> contractor out of Central Florida. They do everything from commercial build-outs to home remodels, and we very much appreciate them being our sponsor. Thank you. CNR Constructors. Visit them on their website, www.crconstructors.net. So uh, Ronnie and I had a bet last week, and I didn't care about either team, but I figured I would take Alabama just because Ronnie took Georgia. I don't know. I didn't care. I had four points, three points, whatever it was. So I lost the bet. It was for a cigar, and I wanted to make sure that everybody knows, has, has proof that I, I pay my bets. <laughs> Ooh, with a, with one a, of my favorites, with an acid a, with a, a cigar. So nice. we are square. Oh, wait, that get? is the second cigar you have had it, to pay It me. is, <laughs> but I paid you, so. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> he does not welch on his bets. I will give him that. All right, so you're going to go over, our, unfortunately, our fallen officer's uh, since our last show, correct? Yes, um, so I've, I'm going to change it up for season two. I'm going to pick out some um, interesting uh, cases or instances and, and talk about, <laughs> and there's two. I know every time we talk about uh, fallen officers, we talk about how dangerous traffic can be, crashes, and it's one of the highest. Obviously, the last few years, it's been COVID, but traffic crashes is usually ranked right under um, uh Gunfire. So I wanted to highlight a couple of uh, uh, cases regarding traffic crashes. One, and it's just such a, a horrible incident, <clears throat> uh, Trooper John uh, Horton, uh, first officer dying this year, January 3rd, and he had made an, uh, an arrest, and he was outside of his patrol vehicle with the suspect standing, you know, side of the road. His backup was on the way, and I don't know if he lost control or what, but the backup struck Trooper Horton's patrol vehicle, and then the vehicle <clears throat> struck the trooper and the uh, the sp- suspect that he had arrested, killing both of them. So yeah, it's you guys really really have to be 
careful out there when it comes to uh, uh, traffic. It's just it's it's horrible. I I couldn't imagine two officers dying at the same time, or or an officer killed by another officer. And a little background um, on it. I guess the the road was covered in ice, and it was very yeah like, icy, snowy mm-hmm. conditions. Yeah. So it wasn't like the other trooper just came up there and just, ah, bam. Yeah, not happened. careless. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. It, just it was January dangerous. 3rd, so. Wasn't, weren't they brothers? I or didn't, was that a different. I, I did not. No, it seems like it was the same instance. Oh, my God, that would be horrible. horrible. Yeah, there was like a brother responding and then hit his, own his brother. brother that was already, really? yeah. Oof. Oh, oh my God, that's, that's terrible. Same. Yeah. Wow, that's terrible. <clears throat> um, the second case that's vehicle-related was <clears throat> January 10th. Officer Gonzalez of the uh, New Haven Police Department in Connecticut was traveling to a domestic violence and got into a vehicle crash with a sergeant of the same agency. Um, And the sergeant died right there at the scene. Officer Gonzalez, this happened in, um, it's like, uh, I think it was 2008 (coughs) or almost 10 years ago. And Gonzalez was in a coma until just recently, wow. and she passed away uh, th- this year. Oh, wow. Right, yeah. So not to bring it down, but just please be careful out there when we're dealing with vehicles. If you guys are, if you guys are approaching a uh, police car on the side of the road, please move over and just, you know, or slow down. If you can't move over, just uh, because vehicles are the number two cause of death. Um, outside of COVID in, in law enforcement. It's the law, right? To move it over is the law, yes. Or to slow down to 25? Yes, 20, 20, below 20 under, under if you can't move okay. over. That's yeah. Florida law. Every other state has a move over law. I don't know exactly what their requirements are. But, it, but you should move over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So have to, you guys ever given tickets for non moving oh, over? Oh, yeah. all the time. Yeah, I have too. So to all of our fallen, um, these too, especially, but to all of our following, we say a salute. salute. Absolutely. Salute. God bless you and rest in peace. Mm. All right, so um, I failed to mention at the beginning, as you can tell, we're in a new location. We're at Camille's crib, and uh, so we're going to try to move it around, you know, every couple of shows or whatever, move it around to a little different venue. And uh, next time, we're going to be at John's crib at his bar. And uh, so. If you notice the background's a little different, things have changed a little bit, our seating arrangement, this and that, that's why. So, uh, if all you right. didn't watch more or stop drinking. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, well, I, I don't know. If, just watch more. Don't stop well, drinking. Okay. Yeah, don't stop um, drinking. And, and if I may, our, our special guest, Ronnie, did mention them. We have Dustin and Caitlin. Caitlin is the superstar of. Uh, Murder Hour. Uh, it's an awesome podcast. And you want to tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. So we talk about murder on the <laughs> podcast. Does it go for like an hour? It's about an hour, okay. give or take. You know, sometimes we go or under it, you know, whatever. Depends not on how really, much we're drinking. Right. Not really a depends. creative podcast. No. <laughs> we do have a beer moment as well. We've taken a little hiatus. Uh, we had a baby, so, you know, baby things. But we're... Getting back into it, podcasting, talking about murder, things like that. Yeah. Of the murder. Is it scripted? Definitely not. No, because no, a lot of the murder no. murder podcasts are just, they, they read from a script. 1984, <laughs> it was a dark night. And I'm like, oh, God, how boring was can that stormy be? stormy night? A dark night. Dark and stormy night, yes. <laughs> Play it fast and loose. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you could join us tonight, guys. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. All right, so John's going to go into his topic tonight, which is, like I said before, our district attorneys across the country being soft on crime. And I will just mention one thing, and I know he's going to cover a lot of this, but uh, a good friend of mine is in the retail business. He's a manager, and uh, he is telling me that the way that law enforcement is proceeding with a lot of these criminal cases and a lot of the... um, Corporate culture now is, oh, we don't, we don't want to prosecute. We, we don't want to go to court. We don't want to have anything like that to do with anything like that. And it, it's, it, it, anyway, he's going to cover a lot of that, but it just, it's sickening the way we're headed. Now, really I is. remember when, when I was on patrol, if we ever got a call to a shoplifter, automatic arrest. It was, there was no ifs, ands, or buts. That was that chief. It. Yeah. And you know who started that? Mm. Steve Gregory. Oh, yeah? <laughs> He said to the chief one day, he said, if we, and that's my dad, 
rest is rest in peace. He said that if we let these people go with a notice to appear or just take the property back and let them go, we are going to have every shoplifter in this entire county, in this city, stealing everything we have in this city. And he said, once we send a message that everybody goes to jail, if you stole a 12 cent pack of gum and you're an adult, you went to jail. Yeah. And we did that. And what was our crime rate for shoplifting? Like zero. Uh, eventually, I don't remember going to many more. Many. Not until all. they opened like Home Depot and this and that did we even have a shoplifting problem. Yeah. But and look who was working when it was a twelve cent pack of gum. <laughs> so, <laughs> so be it, the five and dime. Far be working. it nowadays. It ain't like that anymore. The price of gum or mm-hmm. the way they're dealing with this crime. So go ahead, John. All right. So. Crime right now is one of the biggest topics, you know, the entire country is concerned about it. And there, there's a lot of reasons why it's happening. <clears throat> and one of the things is DAs, and it's not just DAs, but a lot of DAs are basically coming out and saying they're not going to prosecute certain cases, certain types of crimes, and things like that. Yeah, what, is, it, is it California that you can steal... Up to a thousand dollars. I believe nine hundred and fifty is a threshold. Yeah, and and actually, California is one of the ones we're going to focus talk about a little bit um, because um, George yeah. Gascon. You do your math. <laughs> yeah, or just do the <laughs> math. We kind of talk about that too because <laughs> you gotta you're under calculated. Yeah. Well, I'm at nine forty nine. Stop. Now, does yeah, that include but, taxes? The uh, but, but the problem <laughs> is, the <laughs> they just don't bother stopping anyone. Okay, no, so don't. it's like that's why you see you know people running in you know loading up shopping carts or grocery bags or whatever they just run out the store with whatever they can and, yeah. and nobody stops them. Well, corporations have the money to lose and insurance. Well, they do, except for the fact that we pay for it because they raise the prices because they've got to pay higher insurance rates. True. It's a vicious cycle. It is. Um, but George Gaston, Gascon, um, um, he's the L.A. County District Attorney. Um, and interesting fact, Sean Laval Smith, the one who killed, uh, oh, that girl just yeah. the other day, yep. the student. Yep. Brianna Kupfer. Yep. Okay. Sean Laval Smith was charged in LA County. I believe it was LA County with, uh, possession of stolen property, which would have been a felony until right. they passed this law. Okay. So had he been charged with a felony and been processed as they should have been and been sitting in jail, Brianna Kupfer would still be here today. Okay. Um, George Gascon is so bad. but he will How not, bad is he? He is so bad. <laughs> um, he will not allow his assistant district attorneys or prosecutors. Again, we live in Florida where we have state's attorneys. Yeah, district attorneys, prosecutors, they're all the same thing. So Just a different vernacular. Yeah. Um, so he will not allow his assistant DAs to file enhancement charges. So really, yes. So if you commit, a, you know, certain crimes with it in the possession of a firearm, if you are doing it in, with gang related activity, if you do it with you know all sorts of different things, wearing a mask, different things will enhance the crime because the legislature has decided that if you do this. It is makes it, it worse. Makes it worse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, when so you when you go in and you commit a robbery wearing a mask, a gun, and a bulletproof vest, the, right. the legislature voted in by the people say that's worse. That's bad. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, he won't allow them to charge the enhancements. Now you have um, mm-hmm. Officer Fernando Arreos was an off duty Los Angeles Los Angeles police officer. Mm-hmm who was out house hunting with his fiance. Remember this, yeah. And he ended up being attacked by four gang members, and they killed him. Oh, God. Okay, well, because uh, Mr. Gascon will not seek any enhancement pel- penalties because killing a police officer is enhancement. Um, it's not a specific it? charge? No, it's... Well, I mean, I think there may be a specific charge, but it, there is also enhancement okay. involved with it. But he won't allow any of that to go on. Um, including the fact that they're doing it as gang activity, okay, which is, again, an enhancement. Mm-hmm. Um, Sheriff Villanueva of Los Angeles County 
ask that the federal prosecutors take over that case. Okay. Because he knows Gascon is going to basically let these guys walk. Are they going to? Yes. Okay. They've already taken over that case. Okay. Um, so what did they end up charging right, them Right, what with? do you charge them with if you can't? So if he murdered that they, they guy, they charged him with, they, well, the federal prosecutors ended up charging him with murder. Okay. 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 But what an enhancement is, if, if certain things apply to this crime, so they were doing it as gang-related activity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that enhances it. Mm-hmm. So it adds, it, it doesn't add another charge, it just kind enhances of would it, it a little but, worse. No, 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 but would it just, just like if it's a police officer, it makes it. You know, let me ask you this: yeah, Would it? And 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 I know just the the idea of not adding an enhancement is, is a horrible idea, but in in murder, well, California is probably really lax on sentencing murder. But do you need an enhancement with murder? Well, I I, I personally don't think so. That was my but yeah. my my problem is. The legislature has passed these laws. Right. And it shouldn't be the DAs who are saying, well, I'm just not going to enforce it. Yeah, that's well, a, that's a that's dereliction that of duty, right? Yeah. I mean, isn't, I mean, the governor, In my opinion. the governor, if they weren't like, um, Orange County. It? Yeah, Orange County when they shot, uh, uh, where, when um, Marquise Lloyd shot and killed the uh, Lieutenant Clayton. 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 Yeah. Um, the, she wasn't uh, going to go over the death penalty. They were, yeah. And so yeah. the governor said, uh, yeah, yeah. Ayala or whatever. Yeah, you're off your case. Aramis Ayala, which yeah. thankfully she has been voted out of office. I was going to yeah. say, I don't think she's even... Yeah, yeah, so we don't have to worry about her possibly. But what was great was the governor at the time, which is... Right. No, it's no, not, it was Rick Scott, Scott, I'm pretty right. sure. Oh, it was Rick Scott, you're right. Yeah, yeah. He said, and pulled a run off the case, yeah. which was, thank God. Huh? Crypt Keeper. Uh, <laughs> we call him the Crypt Keeper. <laughs> Yeah, I can, I can see that. <laughs> my, my, my wife called him, uh, oh my God. Skeletor. Yeah, Skeletor. <laughs> Skeletor, yeah. <laughs> oh God. That's funny. But she is now currently running to take Val Deming's um, seat in Congress. Oh, God. You'll never, so, but isn't, get, you'll but never isn't, get her spot unless Val moves. Well, Val is, but that's, Val is, Val is running, Val is running, for, running for senator. senator. Okay. Yeah. So she's not running again. Oh, or Val's not Con- running again? Val's not running for Congress. Mm. She's running for Senate against Rubio, and then oh no, if if nobody's going to be Ar- Rubio in Florida. I Sorry. forget how it works. Like, if you run for one, do you automatically like, give up the other? Yeah. You do not have to. I was going to say because I know there's. I so know if she know. loses, she could retain it. No, no. Well, she has to be she's still run for. It. She's still yeah. to be voted. So she can't run. So for you, both you, at can, the same you time. can run for both at the same time. Okay. However, she's not going to. Okay. Um, and she's not so, going to be Rubio. <laughs> Last question I have, and I'll leave you alone. No, we'll have plenty more questions. What's, what's, uh, has Jerry said anything about moving? Jerry Deming? Yeah. Moving I'm just away. curious because I wonder if he's going to run for anything else. Not that I'm aware of. I haven't heard that Jerry Deming's going to run for anything else. about the school teacher from the Peanuts? That guy can put me to sleep quicker than Oh, yeah. I just want him to, like, read me bedtime stories. If you ever have a problem sleeping, man, and I told my wife, This is not how this was supposed to go. I told my wife, I said, record. You bring in a couple of drunks, and that's what you get. I said, record one of his news broadcasts where he's giving the speech or whatever. I said, just turn that on, and within two minutes, gone. Out like a light. Yeah, I'm telling you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry, 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 John. Sorry, yeah, John. Sorry, John. Sorry. It's okay. entertainment. It's good. <laughs> All right, another another DA, um, John Chisholm from Mil- Milwaukee County. Um, he stated, <coughs> "Oh, is this the guy who pointed the rifle at the jury?" No, 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 no. Oh, no okay, what? I, no. There's a thing. Someone did that. Yeah, the, in, in the in the Rittenhouse case. Rittenhouse case. During closing arguments, the the, uh, oh, the guy yeah, he had it up like this, and he pointed it right at the jury. And like his finger was, was on the trigger. Yeah. It was on the trigger. There you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. yeah oh, we put it on the show where we covered that, and I had his picture with his finger on the trigger showing it. Yeah. Dumbass. Chisholm was one of the earliest of this new breed of progressive um, DAs, and he instituted policies very similar to George Gascon, and he said. That he was certain that people will be call, will be killed because of these policies. He, he what kind of sense does that make? I'm going to do this knowing that people will be killed. Well, I don't know but, what that means. But the overall purpose was to make criminal justice system fair. So for the greater good, it's like Correct. a train track have, thing okay. where you need to so, be clever and it. 
So what is more is fair to the criminals, not the victims? This is Lord Farquaad. Right. Some, Some of you, of you will may die, die. <laughs> and there's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. So, <laughs> so in Milwaukee <laughs> County, much. there is a gentleman by the name of Daryl Brook. Do you know who Daryl Brook is? Yeah. Okay, he's the one who decided to drive his SUV oh, yeah. Yeah. through the Christmas parade okay. yes. in Waukesha. Okay, he happened to be out on bond for five hundred dollars for shooting his nephew. Okay, and then another thousand dollars was his bond. nephew a dick? See, there you go. Doesn't matter. I mean, Tiny. Then another th- <laughs> another thousand dollar bond for um, domestic felony domestic violence, where he almost killed his wife. Just a thousand, Only a thousand bucks. Yeah, there you go. So, for fifteen hundred dollars, he was allowed to go out and mow down sixty people. Wait, wait, Killing wait, six. Hold on a second. His bond was fifteen hundred dollars, but that's only ten percent of that. So he only had to pay one hundred fifty. So for one hundred fifty dollars, right. he got out and with killed. collateral for the yeah. other. Yeah, most people's trucks can't fill with gas for that much money. <laughs> well, nowadays. <laughs> I mean, those are some pretty serious crimes to begin with. Correct. And I just Milwaukee be wild. Right? It's like the wild. The West, but it's, I mean... The wild Midwest. 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 (laughs) And then the the last one we're going to kind of touch on, and and some of this is, you know, unfairly being applied to um, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, because unfortunately New York State itself, because they had the illustrious uh, Mario Cuomo um, sign into law, um... (laughs) Basically, every crime in the state of New York has no or low bond status except what's considered serious violent felonies. So you had people who were committing armed robberies, apparently not a serious violent felony. Of course not. Okay, because they'd, they'd get arrested for armed robbery, appear in court, be released, and go commit another armed robbery. But did anyone die during the first armed robbery? No. But so it's okay as long as you don't die. I Do whatever mean, you want as long as you don't die. I think, don't kill I think anybody. Well, part of it is as long, long as no one was hurt or injured during the robbery, well, then it, then they allow them, they release them. Yeah. I no, mean, no, it, it, it didn't matter if they were hurt. It so there's just, no consequences. This, this was state law. Okay, now what Alvin Bragg has decided to do, although he is starting to walk back what he had said, because um, he said that. Any crime, any, you know, if there's a store robbery, armed robbery with a gun, but no one was shot or seriously hurt, we're going to reclassify that crime as petty theft. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. (laughs) So now, yeah, just saying, now he is saying he's still saying that. Well, no, he's now, he's now. Just from the report I saw. Right, because another thing is there's a couple of. An hour ago. Several, well, yeah, but it was from a day ago. Several wait, crimes wait, wait, that wait, he was not... Wait, cr- go ahead. Man, you this is the most research I've ever done. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You did some research? <laughs> what? That was on his phone on the, on the, on the, on the ride over well, here while she was driving. Kill and he used drive. To prosecute that no matter what. And now, now he's, he's saying, saying that he he's will. going to do it. Yes. And he's going to continue to do it. Yes. He's like, maybe a little. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so a couple of crimes that Depends he's not going to... Or he said he was not going to prosecute again. He changed his mind today. Um, resisting officer or interfering with arrest, okay, or trespassing, and or prostitution. Okay, the prostitution one. Yeah. I, and I was there's a reason I put that in there. There's several other ones. There's Just misdemeanor. Remember he, has, he has bullet. He has talking points. Yeah. There's misdemeanor marijuana charges and things like that. Just leave them alone. We didn't make it to page two. I apologize. Well, and the I reason the reason I put in prostitution is, and there's a lot of arguments about... <laughs> um, don't be disgusted. <laughs> you know, prostitution is essentially a vict- victimless crime. And therefore, okay, I can understand you exercise some discretion on that one. Okay, resisting an officer in Florida is resisting an officer with violence, with or without violence. Okay, so, but it basically resists resisting an officer. Mm-hmm. Okay, if they choose not to charge that case, you know, what authority then does an officer have on scene? Right, if they're not prosecuting somebody who fights a cop, 
Then what? Yeah, what? Pers- then how what stops people from fighting cops? Right. Trespassing. That's a good point. Okay, when you're trespassing, I think you just shoot them. Right? Well, Jesus. well, when when, when when you're trespassing, okay, trespassing. No, that's only if you're an arbory. Okay, there we go. Fair well, enough. Fair enough. If if you're trespassing, okay, and that's basically the arbory case. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> you're you're in there against the owner's permission or consent. Okay, but you gotta leave. You're just causing a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, you've got to leave. Well, now I can't arrest you for trespassing if you don't leave. If you don't leave, because I know the state attorney is not going to file charges. Why can you not still arrest them? Yeah, yeah if they're not, if they're not going to charges, well, charges nonetheless, you can still arrest them. Just to get them off. Well, okay. We, 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 we used to say just for the shop. And, and 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 to that point, we mm-hmm. used to say you may beat the rap, but you're not going to beat the ride. Okay. You know, knowing well, that well, sometimes the state well, attorney... And, and, and part of it is, you also have to look at the potential long-term effect, of, or not long-term, but consequential effect that may happen. Mm-hmm. Okay? So now, I go to arrest you. Yep. Okay? And you say, I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> so you decide to fight with me. Like physically? Physically fight with me. Okay. Not much of a fight. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm just... I'm Caitlin, you look tough. So, oh, tough. sorry. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. And Caitlin's more the one who's going to fight you. So, <laughs> so, okay, Caitlin, you want to fight me. You're not going to jail. Not today. And I fight you, and I end up putting you on the ground. Okay. And, of course, there's 6,000 people recording with phones. Recording and everything. Right? Yeah. Recording everything. And you end up breaking an arm, you know, hitting I'm your... Just whatever it is. Average exactly. Size woman exactly. Break my <laughs> okay. Now, now we get sued. Right. And it's why were you arresting her? Well, she was trespassing. And was being a dick. I mean. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But but <laughs> she couldn't she either. couldn't be charged with that crime anyway. You knew yeah. it was going to be dropped. Now, did New York get rid of uh, qualified immunity? Also, um, New York City so did. Okay. I so think. she could also get away with fighting against you and sue you personally. Personally. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so, that's a that's a train wreck. So Caitlin's Coming. winning. I don't see the downfall. <laughs> no, the point I'm is sorry. we can't effectively police right. if we mm-hmm. don't have any actual authority. Yeah. So without consequences, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Right. What's the point of this? What's yeah. the reasoning behind this whole? Let the people do what they That's want. Great segue. Now, now you learn segues. Right. Yes. Because <laughs> that, now, we're in, now we're now we're into our discussion <laughs> questions. Although we've covered some of them, um, a lot of it is they're they believe that the underlying reason that all these crimes are occurring is based on drug abuse and mental health, which I'm not going to say is not true. Oh no, those are the number number those are number number one and number two issues in in okay. prisons. So. The most of these DAs are saying it doesn't make sense to put these people in jail. They need drug treatment or mental health treatment. That's reasonable. I I understand that. However, how are you going to get that done if you don't have a court order? How do you get that court order? They were charged with a crime. You get the person to show up. How, how can you maintain? You know, okay, you need drug treatment. <clears throat> Great. But I can't arrest you. You're not going to be charged with a crime. Why are you going to get drug treatment? You're not. Yeah. There's no consequences. You would have gotten anyway. You You like being high. Right. (laughs) Okay. Mental health, one of the biggest problems with mental health, you know, people who suffer with mental health issues Mm -hmm. is the medications that they're given make them feel not bad, but they they feel not 100%. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so it causes issues, and they're like, I'm better. Mm-hmm. I don't need to continue taking this. Yep. Yeah, and then they stop. And then, so it, then they yeah. stop, and then they... It's a vicious just, cycle. Then yeah. it becomes yeah. a vicious cycle. So, granted, we can you know, have alternatives to incarceration. However, there has to be a way to make that happen. Mm-hmm. Well, like in and Florida, it, we, and I don't know about the other states, we have drug court in Florida. If yes. you if you are arrested for a drug crime, you it's 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 a it's a diversion program. You still have consequences. Correct. You are ordered to drug court, yeah. and right. it's for treatment. You have to go through the program and all of that, which is it has some bite to it because if you don't, 
then you go to jail. What's but, the effectiveness of this drug? You know drug what? Drug? That's a great question. I, I don't know what the effectiveness of it. Because I, I think it's great that we do have a drug court option, but right. I mean, we, we need to see results. Mm-hmm. And right now, we're just dumping our money into, you know, people right. being arrested and then incarcerated. And it's well, just back to back to back. So, you know, but but here's the problem. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would like to see the Seattle statistics. I believe it's Seattle that's doing it. Doing what? Um, Letting the people one hundred percent. You can <laughs> literally just do anything. Anything. Oh, any you, mean, drug. you mean you mean the uh, if you get caught with over a certain amount, you automatically have to go to like a rehabilitation facility. Are we like yeah, cuss? I, I yeah. Fuck dropped, no. Yeah, okay. No. Okay. Also, <laughs> last question I have. Well, I dropped the F-bomb. I didn't yeah. know if that was... No, we're, we're cops. Come on. So can you not arrest the people? You said you couldn't arrest them. Well, the I problem wanna... is... Fact. And they're having some issues in... Because in Alvin Bragg is the Manhattan district mm-hmm. attorney. Okay, there's five boroughs in New York. What? Yeah, so he only covers one rapsy. borough. Okay, so he says, we're not going to do this. Okay, but the other four boroughs are like, no, we're still enforcing the law. Mm-hmm. So it's like if you get caught on the subway in Manhattan, you're free. <laughs> but if you go to the next stop and you're in Queens, but I mean, are they not in the Bronx? They're not allowed to arrest. Well, and and that was another one of the questions I had. And Ronnie, what happens when the state attorney says we're not going to charge these crimes? What does the administration say we should do? What does the police administration say we yeah. should do? If the state attorney says we're not filing charges on these crimes, I don't understand the question. Well, as Sorry. as the administration, you say we want you to waste your time on these charges. You know, like we're not. So, gonna, a state attorney just sends down a memo and says we're not going to all the police agencies saying, "Hey, as of as of today, we are not going to be charging X, Y, A, B, C, oh, D." Then we just quit arresting them. And so you sent out an email yep. from the lieutenant desk of Korea. So, but that's... Actually, it's more like this. <laughs> so, but that's like... Yeah. A, <laughs> so, but that's a choice to not arrest at well, that point. Like, because there's going to be no repercussion, essentially. Uh, no, you know what? I, I, it just brings up a... It just brings up... And I just, just, just occurred... I'm sorry. I no, no, no. You're fine. You're fine. Keep going. It, does that make an, a, a, an unlawful arrest? Yeah, no. the state attorney no. says no. no because it is still a law and it mm-hmm. is a lawful law. That's the state attorney's choice if they choose to not uh, prosecute that. Do their job. Still, it, it, right. it, until it's taken out of the law and, and it's no longer a law, it's that still should, a legal arrest. That should never happen. Yeah, right, the whole thing is it, it's insane. I think but. some laws. So I, I oh absolutely, so, I have no problem with that. What's up? So I talk to, <coughs> still, almost on a daily basis, probably at least every other day, I talk to current law enforcement officers that are out here doing the job and on the road, you know, doing it every day. And the over-resounding comments that I get is, it's just not the way it used to be. And I'm like, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, I know... Yeah, because every generation says that. You know, I'm like, I know it's, you know, you got body cameras, you got this. They're like, no. Guys and gals are afraid to go out and make arrests anymore for simple crimes that are committed on a daily basis. They're afraid to go out and make the arrests anymore. Well, I I sent you that video. Because of lawsuits... Because of scrutiny from the administration, finding every little thing that they may have said or done wrong, you didn't have your mask on. Or why did you say, hey, come here? Why didn't you say, sir, hey, come here? Or, or, it, it is absolutely ludicrous. And it's only going to get worse until, and this is a prime example. His, his topic for this entire show is a prime example of what I'm talking about. It is going to get to a point where one of two things are going to happen. Either America's going to wake up and they're going to say, enough of this bullshit. We need to start putting these assholes in jails. And I don't care if you have to build 500 more prisons. We need to put them in jail and keep them in jail so that all of us law-abiding citizens are safe. Or it's going to get to a point where it run amok 
and it's going to be a goddamn revolution is what's going to happen. So I, it's, I, it's, I'm telling you, it's coming. I tell my students that criminal justice is on a pendulum. Um, you guys don't remember this, but you guys do. The 80s. Wasn't even a cra- thought, Crazy time in the 80s. <laughs> Florida was like the, the murder capital of the country because of crack cocaine. And people were getting out of prison for murder in six, seven years, maybe. Really? Oh, it's crazy. Right so, when I got on the job. Right. right. Crack so, cocaine had taken over and destroyed the land. Yeah. It destroyed and that people were people were killing each other for, for territory. I mean, Miami was the murder capital of the country for years. <clears throat> and <laughs> we were putting people out because we had parole in Florida up until 83, 86. I forget which. It's, it's the 80s. And there were citizen groups, and, and one of the citizen groups was called STOP, and, and it stood for Stop Turning Out Prisoners. And the citizens of Florida said, hey, this is bullshit. You kill somebody and you get out in six years? So the citizens forced the legislature of the state of Florida to get rid of parole, okay, we have what's called truth and sentencing, which mandates you have at least, you spend at least 85% of your sentence in prison before you're eligible for um, good time or any of that. And um, it, in, like you were talking about enhancements, it enacted the 1020 life. If you used a gun, you carried a gun, you shot a gun, you know. I remember it, seeing billboard. Right, 1020 that. life. Yeah. And that came out of the 80s because it was it, it went so out of the, from, from the 70s being so easy on crime, um, it, it went all the way. Escape and then, from New York. And then the, and then the citizenry was, said, oh, you know what? No, 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 no. That's yeah, enough. No more. And then they, and, and I firmly believe that criminal justice is on a pendulum. Now, the problem is, it's very difficult to come with a happy medium. Right. Because what do pendulums do? They don't hang right here. Right. They swing from one extreme to the other. Right. Next. And then we had where well, you know what? If you have just, if you so have nice. if you have twenty grams of, of weed, you're gonna be in for ten years. Why? Well, it's right. Just weed. So I agree I think you were talking about this earlier, in some common sense laws. Don't bust people for weed. Well, the I mean, problem is, you know, they're trying to institute the change before we're ready for it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't disagree with the fact that there's a lot of people who need drug treatment and mental health. Mm-hmm. However, we need to be able to do that. And we don't have the capacity to do that right now. And without being able to do that and letting people just continue to go out on the street, are, are criminals more brazen right now? Yes, absolutely. Because, because there's no consequences. Trouble. I mean, it, it, they're they're stealing stuff. I mean, the I just heard a study today that the the tr- we're back to the 1800s with train robberies. Have you guys heard <laughs> yes, that in California? I did. There's that train robberies train. going Robin on. Amazon trains. I yeah. was like, what? Yeah, because what train robbery? Robbery. because because Sorry, nothing's. Fr- I know it's not a train it's robbery, Amazon but it sounds thing. better. So no, but it was Amazon. Yeah, it's strewn because it's like up 160-something percent, these train burglaries and robberies, because you know what? Nothing's happening. But here's the problem I see, and and you just said it, and I'm going to jump on you a little bit, Camille. Yeah. And and Caitlin, don't bust anybody for weed. Bullshit. And here's why I say that. Weed is illegal. It is illegal. Right. To possess for recreational purposes. Absolutely. Yes. It is against the law. Yes. So you either enforce the law yep. or you don't enforce the law. Right. And you can't have it both ways. No. And here, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. So here's what you do. If you don't like a law the way it is, then you lobby and you have the law changed. Don't have it where, well, I just don't think we should bust people for smoking weed. So here's a person who steals all the time in in a convenience store. Mm-hmm. To them, it's perfectly okay. They're it's a victimless crime. They think it is. Mm-hmm. They're stealing from a convenience store. So they think that petty theft. You should never be arrested for petty theft. But their parents were dope addicts, so they think that you should be arrested for marijuana. Okay. So you either have to change the law. Mm-hmm. Or 
You just have to go with what we got, which is if it's illegal and you possess it and you're driving around in your car and you have an ounce of weed in your car, you should go to jail. So speaking of, of weed. I'm not saying I'm against it. No, no, I'm, no. I'm just saying. You're, you're, you're right. You're the a law black, is black the black. law. But let me ask you. In Seminole County, because I know in Volusia County, if you're in possession of 18 grams of cannabis, in Volusia County, you get a ticket. Right. That's not the law. It's a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. Right. What about Seminole County? Because you guys just... Well, that out. ticket is probably a... Uh, notice to appear. Yeah, yeah it's notice okay. to appear. Right. We were doing the right. same thing okay. for misdemeanor marijuana. So, so it's obvious. And, and the thing and I don't mean you have to go to jail. I'm right. just saying if it's against the law... Then you should treat it like any other violation that is against the law. Right. If you don't and, like and, it, get it changed. And I get that. But there's, in, in my in my opinion, the difference between somebody possession weed and stealing is, from my libertarian stance, what? I'm just when I smoke. If if I I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke weed. <laughs> <laughs> if I smoke weed, that's me. I'm not True affecting. <laughs> I'm not affecting anybody else. Yes, you but are. I am not. Yes, you are. If I affect somebody yes, else, yes, you are. Who am I affecting? Because you had to buy it. Unless you're growing it on your own, you had to buy Maybe. it. That guy had to buy 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 it. Now we're up to this big guy Came who sold it and could have <laughs> killed four people. Getting mm. it here, wherever it is. Can you That's, charge? A, can you charge somebody on could have? Can you charge somebody on could have on the other stuff? No, you can't. No, of those. course not. But you're using a straw man argument. But of you're could saying have that killed four that, people. that is, you're saying it's completely victimless. Thanks, Ken. My it's not. No, no, no. My smoking <laughs> yes, weed. It is not. I'm victimless. not talking about the. I'm not talking about the sale. I'm How'd talking. You get it? It doesn't matter. You, wait, yes, wait, it does when, matter. When you catch me and you pat me down and you search me, and you find a bag of weed. Are you charging me with? Uh, are you charging me with possession or are you charging me with, with sale? possession? Right. right, my possession. Right, right. I'm charging with right. conspiracy to commit murder. Well, you're <laughs> saying you're saying me smoking weed John's on the doesn't affect picture. anyone, and I say yes, it does. Unless you grew it in your backyard and what if all I did? by yourself. Now, what if I did? Then. It absolutely affected no one but you. Right. So it's a victimless crime. If you grew it yourself, yes. That's it. But yes. We have to say that but not, you didn't say that. It's, it's I did not say it. Weed, immediately going to be like, I grew it myself. This is my weed from seed to. Then I have no problem with that it. whatsoever. And I think that that should be deep. No, and, and, and here's a little bit of to why, the max. why I also have a problem kind of getting off the weed thing, although weed is another thing. A lot of times we, when we stop people and we find some weed, it's like, oh, well, he doesn't have a history. But he was found with weed 18 times, but no one ever charged him with it. Okay? 18 times. <clears throat> yeah, but because there's no report saying he was charged with it, it's his first time. Yeah. Not a big deal. Now, change that to going back to Alvin Bragg, okay, when you commit an armed robbery, but we're going to drop this down to misdemeanor theft... Okay, when we check a criminal history and we're trying to find out, okay, Dustin, is he a bad guy? Well, yeah, he's got six armed robberies on his record. Okay, he's probably got a gun. But no, it's going to say he's got six misdemeanor petty thefts. Right. 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 And so I, that's why it's important for... And the three the strikes record. rule just gets thrown out the window because no longer three no strikes when it's misdemeanor. Yeah. Right. Now, I know we're, we're, we're short for time, but I, I, I and, and I think everybody here agrees um, that... Drug abuse and mental illness, number one and number two issues when it comes to a lot of this. I don't understand why we can't spend some money on treatment in jail, in prison. It, there, we're just housing and I'm okay. people. I think we've gotten ourselves into a sticky situation with the whole prisons being you know, this just monetized system. I mean, it's... I'm not going to argue that. The point is... Don't change it until you're ready to change it. Right. Just like, and I'm going to make this correlation mm. with immigration. Okay? I think most people who are here illegally before this past year, okay, most people who are here illegally. Why this past year? Because we just had an unusual, ungodly amount of influx of like illegal two immigrants. Two million. The point is, when President Trump started building the wall, I'm not saying he should have, should not have. I think most Americans would have been okay with, okay, everyone who's been here before the wall was built will figure out a way to let you stay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, but we got to stop the flow first yep. through okay. legal channels. Right. Let them get so, naturalized. And, 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 and this is where the legislature and speed that crazy. up for them. Right. Right. Make it a little yeah. speed that up for them. them. So letting a year to four living. doesn't. I mean, I know they came in illegal, and you know they're illegal, and all, but they're already here. But I think most speed it up for them, let them become citizens. I think most people would be okay with them staying here. However, we make that happen, but we got to stop the flow first. Just like we got to stop the crime triage. We got to stop. Yeah, hey, you got to stop the bleeding, man. Yeah. yeah. Stop the crime, and while you're trying to stop the crime, build the you know drug rehabs, drug the mental health facilities, drug that, and let. But the courts are the only ones who can mandate it. So, so what you're talking, what, what you're saying is, we are putting the cart before the horse. Yes. We should say, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to focus on drug treatment. We're going to tr- focus on mental health, and then we're going to maybe, once we have that established, do some decriminalization. I, I, I agree with you, John. All right. All right. We well, got to kick this pig in the uh, in the rear end here. <laughs> um, do you have any other? Um, Closing comments on that, John? Oh, I think I got everything in. I think we had a pretty good conversation about it, too. I agree. Dustin, do your topics always get this heated? No. Um, Not always, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes. I just didn't know this because... I used to have different different opinions. You have different opinions. No, no, no. I'm a little quieter usually, but tonight I don't have as much going on, so... And and when it comes to, you know, the arresting and this and that, I get a little heated because... When I was a cop, it was completely different than it is now, which is why I could not be a cop right now because I would probably only last about a month and they would fire me. Hey, hey, hey. You're you're damn right. You're damn right. LT. Those were the good days. LT, LT, did you arrest everybody you had in possession of weed? I did not. Hmm. I did not. Hmm. D- didn't he say that everybody who was Every in possession? No, no, I did not <laughs> say that. Oh my God! I did, <laughs> say it. I did not say just that. Say what it. I said was, did they all say it no? It's a myself. violation of the law. <laughs> if it's a violation of the law, it's a violation of the law. You can't just say, "Well, I just don't think we should arrest people for weed." It's not what I. That's not no, what we, I said. we we didn't we, though. We I mean, the three of us, and I, I don't. No, I'm gonna, I, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like... Mm. And I'm talking... Yeah, it, it, was, it was after about 12 years, I finally said, all I'm right. I'm talking if it was one or two grams. I'm yeah, talking yeah. a little pin joint. We used to just and smash no it into record. the ground. You'd smash it into the ground and say, look, you little turd, get out of here. You or I've got a year to charge... Or oh, I've no. got a year to charge you. You tell me who's doing the, the vehicle right. burglaries. As always, we yeah. appreciate each and every one of you listening and subscribing. Make sure you hit that like and that subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. And make sure you visit Murder Hour Podcast on Spotify or anywhere that you get your podcast, And you can find it in the same spot that you find ours, which is Spotify, Apple Podcast, Anchor. Any of your podcast affiliations will have both of our shows. They're going to be kicking back up here in a couple weeks and get their new season started. So make sure you jump over there and listen to Murder Hour Podcast. We appreciate it. From all of us here at Surviving the Badge... We're still giving away stickers, so if uh, you can answer this question, right? We, we want to do they have, that. You have to be a subscribed person on YouTube or um, one of the podcasts. You have to, I don't know, do you subscribe on a podcast? What's that? No, you don't subscribe yeah. on a podcast, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it has to be YouTube and you have to be subscribed on YouTube. You can send us an email also, retiredcopsrule at gmail, but if you tell me, or tell us what the first name of Miranda, in as in Miranda v. Arizona. It's Carmen, correct? No, no you can't. <laughs> on the show. Oh. I don't know We're going to give you a sticker for just being here. <laughs> so send us a, uh, a, a comment in, our, in, the, in the comments in the YouTubes. Right? Is that the, the yeah, YouTube? Yeah, down below, please. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe yeah. and like and answer, and we will send you a... Murder Hour, no, no, Murder Hour, oh there my gosh, <laughs> a, a Surviving the Badge sticker. What is the first name of Miranda as in and Miranda as, And as always, at Surviving the Badge, still we still got, got your six. six.